Hi, my name is Roger and I have a question for you. Do you usually trig your drums? Use samples on your live drum recordings? Either replacing your drums or doubling your drums? I don't usually replace my drums with samples, but I often use samples in other ways, either creative or rescue-wise. And I will show you a little bit about that in this video. And I will also uh, tell you a little bit about how I think, when and where I could and maybe should use samples. So stay tuned. The first question we must ask ourselves is, do we really need samples on our live drums? If the drummer is good and the drum set sounds the way you want it, why use samples, right? Don't use samples just because you're used to use samples, is my take on it. But we can be creative with it, we can, make, we can rescue things with samples sometimes, and I will show you a little bit right now. Let's start with the first drum kit. I set up a few drum kits in my session here. The first drum kit sounds like this. It's actually me playing drums on this track and I can hear that because I'm not a drummer and the bass drum isn't as consistent as I like it to be. I also need some more aggressiveness in the snare and I know that because the rest of the song, you can't hear the rest of the song obviously here, but the rest of the song is filled with pianos, B3 organs, electric guitars, so I need the snare drum to pop out in the mix. And I will use samples to just enhance my recording. So the first thing I will do is to create a trigger track. There are plugins that can do this. Uh, Slate have one, up trigger, but I think also most most doors nowadays can do this. I know Studio One, Cubase, and in my case, Logic can do this. I will use Logic and show you how I do it in Logic. I go to Track, I choose the kick in Track, I go to Track and Replace or Double Drum Track like this. Uh, choose Kick and see if it has been triggered decently. I will look at the transient on the quick kick and then the MIDI signal that have been created from the triggering uh, uh, thing. Uh, and it looks good. So let's press OK. Then I will bus that to my bass drum bus so you can hear it. And let's try and find a sound. I have a folder with samples I normally use, but for this purpose, for you, I will use Logic's built-in sampler with the factory presets, factory sounds. So we have a bunch of acoustic kick drum sounds here. Single drums, kicks, acoustics, and we have electronics and layered kicks. So I will try to see if I can find a sound. And what I'm after is a sound that sounds similar to my original kick. Oh no. I think we can use that one. And the next thing I'm going to do, because I want this to be consistent and even level throughout the song and I don't want to compress my acoustic recording, at least not too much, because I don't want to take the life out of the, the acoustic drums. So I will go to MIDI and I will compress the MIDI signal, uh, dynamics, and I will choose fixed. So now it's the same volume on every kick drum hit from the sample. Yeah, and I can raise the velocity a little bit so we get a different sample. Too much. That is good. Now I will lower that fader and then I will blend that in with the original kick whilst I'm listening to all the drums.
something like that. I don't want to hear this sample. I just want this sample to make the kick drum more even. And how about a bit more aggressive snare then? I will do the same thing. I will trigger the snare. I will try to find a sound. I think that this sound could do it. And this time I didn't compress the MIDI signal because I want the levels to be as I played it on my live recording. Uh, so this is the sample I've chosen. I like the ringingness of that snare, but it's too long, so I will shorten, shorten the snare sample. Something like that. And then I will do the same thing. Lower it and then blend it in. I think that is enough. Of course you have to listen to this in the context of the whole song. But without the uh, samples it sounds like this. And with them. That's a way you can use samples to enhance your tracks. The next kit have a different kind of problem and I treated it also differently. It sounds like this. Really good drummer, I've played this. And the drum kit sounds a little bit thin, but it's supposed to th sound thin because it's surrounded by a lot of thin acoustic instruments like acoustic guitars and mandolins and things like that. And it really blends in perfectly with the rest of the instruments in the whole song, except for one thing. I miss the snares from the snare drum because this recording only have a top mic on the snare. Uh, the snare drum sounds like this by itself. What I did was that I copied the snare track and then I put a plugin on that copy, a free plugin that is called uh, Snare, snare Buzz. Snare buzz. Uh, this is from Waves Factory. I will link it down below. It actually has a mix knob so you can put it directly on the top mic if you want to, but I usually like to put it on a copied track because then I can EQ it differently from the top mic snare and it sounds like this by itself really horrible really horrible on its own but listen in context I will start with it without without the snare uh, track and then I will put it in It sounds to me like, like not only the snare drum gets a different dimension, the whole drum kit gets bigger and uh, fuller without taking more space. I like that trick. If you like these kind of videos, please help me by subscribing. That helps me a lot. And also, if you use, usually trigger drums, please leave a comment uh, and tell, me, tell us how you do it, when you do it, and why you do it, so we all can learn from it, all us that are reading the comments. That would be helpful. Thank you. The last drum kit I want to show you have a different kind of issue. It sounds like this. Also, a really good drummer that I've played on this. I, I, I like to mention that I've, I haven't treated these drums with any compression or reverb. Just a tiny bit of EQ from uh, the plugin company Analog Obsession uh, that I made a video about last week. You can check that out if you want to. These plugins are free and they are awesome. But <clears throat> back to this drum kit. It sounds good. But it doesn't sound exciting. I needed some excitement in this drum kit. So I triggered the kick drum and the snare drum with room mics. Yes, samples made out of room mics, not close mic. 
uh, room mics, only room mics. And the room mics sounds like this by themselves. And together with the whole kit, I will start without and then I will put them in so you can hear the difference. First without. Maybe they are too loud, but they, act, they actually give some excitement to the kit. These samples are actually from my own sample drum kit that I have on my webpage. I charge $29 for them, but I will lower the price right now to $5. And because that you are still watching this video, you will get them for $1 if you use this code. $1. <laughs> it's waves that you just put in your sampler of choice and use them however you like. I usually use them mostly as a toolkit for triggering things, room triggering, and also the cymbal samples are actually rather good. So if I need extra cymbals on a hit in a song, I can use those samples. They are worth one dollar, I promise you. That were a few ways you can trigger your drums without ruining your live recording. Thank you for watching. You know that snares underneath the snare drum, we call them Sejarmatta. Sejarmatta in Swedish. Until next time, Roger that.